What's up everybody, I'm Sean and thank you for joining me. 2021 has not been a great year for the rumour mills where accuracy is concerned. Even so, an October or November MacBook Pro refresh was always likely and not one to be ignored. However, knowing full well that a major refresh was likely on the horizon, I still decided to pull the trigger on a custom 13-inch MacBook Pro just one month before the new 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros were announced. And here is why. Prior to my 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, I was using a 2017 13-inch 4 Thunderbolt port MacBook Pro. And it worked great for almost everything I needed it to do, as long as it stayed plugged in. Yes, this model was the one with the shortest battery life of the bunch thanks to its size and the power efficiency of Intel's Kaby Lake chips. Even after changing to a new battery, it would last me at most 5-6 to six hours doing basic tasks and it would barely last me more than 2 hours when using Final Cut Pro. Now, while the new M1 MacBook Air was definitely a strong contender, I just simply wanted the longest battery life I could get in a laptop. I also knew that I didn't want to go for the 16 inch because I generally prefer the smaller sizes which are more portable. Plus, if history is anything to go by, a souped up M1X chip as it was referred to back then in the 14 inch body would most likely suffer from a reduced battery life. And I was right. As seen in pretty much every review on the internet as well as my own experience, the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro does get 20 hours of battery life doing basic tasks and even for video editing can easily last 8 to 10 hours on stop. That's even longer than my old 2017 would last when doing basic tasks. And the 14 inch as we now know does fall short by several hours doing basic tasks although it could in some cases eke out a little bit more battery life than the 13 inch for doing video editing. However, since the majority of what I do usually involves word processing, spreadsheets, and a bit of web development, the 20 hour battery life was the far better option for me. Yes, I'm one of the three people who actually like the touch bar. And no, I don't use its flashy functions that were displayed when it was first launched. I actually use it as a customized control strip. So why didn't I just get the normal physical function keys like on virtually every other MacBook you may ask? Well, it's partly because I had already become accustomed to my customized control strip from my previous 2017 and the new models just didn't have the same controls that I use. Yes, I am aware that there are apps available to customize the physical function keys but having the icons on them just being something else and not what they actually do does kind of bother me. Plus, there are at least three of those keys that are completely redundant to me. And on the touch bar, I can even fit additional keys wherever I want. Thank goodness for that physical escape key, however, because that might just have been a deal breaker. MacBook Pros aren't cheap, especially not the most powerful ones straight out of a major refresh. It really didn't need much convincing to assume that the new 14 inch MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro or M1X or whatever you would have called it back then would pretty much be in the range of the top end MacBook Pros which tend to cost about 50% more than the base level models. And I was also right. Plus I even got my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro off the refurbished store at a good discount. If I remember correctly, I saved approximately 320 Singapore dollars. For a 16GB RAM and 512GB SSD model, I paid $2,079 off the refurbished Apple Store. In comparison, a base model 14-inch MacBook Pro starts from $2,999 here, over $900 more than what I paid for the same amount of RAM and storage. Yes, you do get an amazing screen, better webcam, better speakers, and the M1 Pro or M1 Max chip but those just aren't game changing enough for what I use it for to sacrifice 6 hours of battery life and an extra 900 over dollars. I'm glad Apple decided to give us back our ports. It's a great thing to have on the new MacBooks. However, while two Thunderbolt ports on the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro might seem a bit pitiful, I have by now embraced the USB-C life and I'm pretty much able to run everything off those two Thunderbolt ports. Even my external monitors are USB-C, so I have a one cable solution for everything. Plus, I also film my YouTube videos off an iPhone 12, 
which I simply airdrop and do not need an SD card to transfer. Maybe when I do move on to a big boy camera, I will finally wish that I had an SD card slot, but for now I do already have a dongle for that if I really need it. So stepping up from the Kaby Lake Intel i5 processor with 8GB of RAM to an M1 with 16GB of unified memory was a huge improvement especially for video editing. Would I still like more power? Yeah, sure. But do I need it? Not really. Realistically, the most intense stuff that I actually do is editing a 10 to 15 minute YouTube video once or twice a week on Final Cut Pro. I use one LUT and I rarely have more than two 4K channels. Everything else I do is mostly basic word processing, spreadsheets, and a bit of web development here and there. So saving a few minutes on a 10 minute export once or twice a week is hardly going to change my life. Plus it does give me a nice window of time to do up my thumbnails. That 20 hour battery life is definitely worth a lot more to me than the power of the new 14 and 16 inch models. So yes, while the new MacBook Pros are definitely for the higher end creative pros, I do still see the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro as the perfect laptop for executive pros, which is the category that I just happen to fall under. So the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros have been out in the wild for just about a month now, and yes, while they are definitely amazing machines, I don't regret my decision one bit. My 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro is the best and most productive computer that I have ever used, and it fits into my workflow like a glove. Leave a comment down below if you have also recently gone for the 13-inch over the 14 and 16-inch, or if you still think that I'm missing something by not going for the new MacBook Pros. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it has helped you if you are in a similar situation, and I'll see you in the next video.